You're tuned into Inside Lowell, Inside Lowell podcast, brought to you in part by Washington Savings Bank, serving the greater Lowell community for over 130 years. Make the switch now to Washington Savings Bank. Reverie 73, Lowell's number one cannabis shop. Elevate your cannabis experience at Reverie 73. Hafners, heating and cooling homes and businesses for nearly a century. Hafners, it kicks. And by Boston North Company, restaurant and retail solutions for your business. That's Boston North. And now, time for another Inside Lowell podcast. Inside Lowell. If Lowell is your home, this is your place. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another Inside Lowell podcast coming to you live from the Inside Lowell Studios in beautiful, historic downtown Lowell. I am your host, Teddy Panos, welcoming you here for a show where we're going to talk a little music, actually going to talk a lot of music because the Lowell Folk Festival is now in the rearview mirror, but straight ahead is the return of the Lowell Summer Music Series for what we'll call the second half of uh, their season. And, and much like a furious football game, the second half is going to be uh, chock full of action here. Peter Arcella is joining us, the man uh, behind the Lowell Summer Music Series at Boarding House Park. Hi, Peter. How are you, man? Um, I'm very good. I enjoyed the festival. And now we have beautiful, sunshiny, cool yeah. weather. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's see how well that keeps up. Yeah, amazing uh, what so. Mother Nature, she did right. a complete, uh, you right. know, 180 from so, the week leading up to the festival. But you got a busy lineup this week. We do. So uh, this week, we, we start out on Wednesday, uh, August 2nd, with the Airborne Comedians at our kids series. Uh, so that's a lot of fun. I mean, they juggle everything, including lawn chairs. So we're the perfect venue for them. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's at um, uh, 10 a.m. We have free snacks and uh, free art activities. Uh, free children's books, etc. So that's uh, it, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday, August 2nd at 10 a.m. And then at 11 a.m. is the Airborne Comedians on stage. So it should be a lot of fun. It's supposed to be a beautiful uh, day. Uh, and then uh, Thursday, uh, August 4th, is a return, the sixth return visit of Lyle Lovett and his large band. Yeah. And um, just one of our favorite shows to do. It is, as of now, sold out. Yeah, the, it's obviously the audience's favorite show as well because <laughs> really? you sold out all your tickets for the outdoor venue as right. well, so there's no right. chance of any last-minute tickets. Add, not adding any. All right. How about uh, those of us with season passes and yeah, other season tickets? Passes, We're allowed to get Yeah, tickets, okay. et cetera, uh, and children get in free with a ticketed adult. Okay. So uh, it's a 13-piece uh, big band, or at least it was last time we saw them, uh, I I think they have three singers with them this time, uh, backing up Lyle Lovett. Uh, but um, uh, it'll be one set, uh, no opening act, no intermission, just two, two and a half hours of Lyle Lovett and his large band and, and some incredible musicianship. So uh, that'll, that'll be a blast. Yeah. And then we follow the following night uh, with um, Melissa Etheridge. Uh, Friday, uh, August 4th. And of course, she's had uh, several Grammy Awards, two Grammy Awards, uh, an Academy Award, because she wrote the theme uh, song to uh, called I Need to Wake Up uh, to the Al Gore documentary uh, on global warming and inconvenient truth. Mm -hmm. So she got an Academy Award for that. Uh, but uh, 16 albums, uh, just a, a tremendous rocking show. And that will be uh, Friday, August 4th. And then uh, this Sunday, uh, nothing on Saturday. By the way, I shouldn't say it, but what was supposed to happen on Saturday was a visit from the Beach Boys, who oh, we had really? in 2019. Oh. Uh, and I you think, would have had a four-show week? I think, in addition, and plus the kids' show. <laughs> uh, I, I think we're all relieved. <laughs> I'm sure that they went I'm elsewhere. sure you are. But uh, this actually, this week is a special treat because traditionally the shows have been on Fridays and Saturdays. Mm -hmm. Every now and then you pop in a Thursday one or right. a Sunday one. Right. This I, I don't ever remember a week where you've actually had a Thursday and a Sunday show right. with a Friday thrown in between yeah. to boot. Yeah. So yeah, it's um it's just the way things fall in the touring, you know, business of each band. Uh but uh so Pink Martini uh is coming on Sunday, August sixth, and they are a phenomenal band. Uh, they're uh, an 18 piece uh, band uh, with um, uh, strings, horns, 
uh, a, a pianist who will remind you in his flamboyant playing and the arms waving everywhere uh, of Liberace. Uh, that's what that's what he reminds me of. I don't know if he thinks it's a compliment, but I, I mean it as a compliment. Uh, he's very uh, uh, theatrical. And then uh, featuring uh, vocalist China Forbes. Uh, the band is based in Portland, Oregon. China Forbes and and um, uh, the leader of the band, Tom Thomas Lauderdale, the key the piano player, um, uh, went to school together at Harvard. So she still lived in um, Cambridge, and uh, back in 1995, he invited her into the band, and they've been, they tour the world. And not only do they tour the world, they sing in 25 languages. So their market is, I mean, they've got an album of Japanese songs. I mean, it, it's unbelievable. So to get this right, you have an act that sings in 25 languages coming to a city where in which 70 languages are spoken. Yeah, right? really. Talk about uh, a United Nation. Right. I, I, I think most people will understand most songs uh, but because uh, mostly they've got a lot of great English language uh, songs, but they do um, really uh, reach out all over the world. And uh, they've, they, have, they have 11 studio albums. So uh, there are people who collect Pink Martini albums because they're they're great music, and um, um, they have played with fifty orchestras around the world, with uh, uh, including the Boston Pops, Los Angeles Philharmonic at the Hollywood Bowl, uh, the National Symphony at the Kennedy Center, and BBC Concert Orchestra at the Royal Albert Hall. So uh, you can't do better than that. No opening act. It is Pink Martini, two sets. And uh, it'll be it'll be a tremendous Sunday night. Love it. So that's a very busy week as you uh, gear back up after mm -hmm. Folk Festival. And then it, the schedule doesn't really slow down. You've got two, nope. sometimes three acts right on through uh, the end of the the series. Uh, Patty Griffin on Friday, August 11th. Mm -hmm. Matt Nathanson on Saturday, mm -hmm. August 12th. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about these acts. Yeah, so Patty Griffin is a folk singer who's been around uh, Austin, uh, Texas-based. Uh, she's been around since the uh, 1990s. She's had, I think, seven Grammy nominations. She's won one. Uh, she's got uh, nine uh, studio albums, two live collections. Uh, and um, she, her music has been performed by all kinds of folks. Uh, Linda Ronstadt, Emmy Lou Harris, uh, the Dixie Chicks, Kelly Clarkson. So, um, um, Martina McBride, I'm thinking. Uh, so, the, so her songs have that sort of university universal appeal. Some folks who know a thing or two about successful music and, and selling records and songs are willing to sing yeah, hers. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> so. And she did tour for several years with Robert Plant in the uh, group Band of Joy, uh, which uh, and I did see them when, uh, back at the House of Blues a few years ago. So uh, that's coming up on Friday, August 11th. So uh, it, it's... Um, uh, a trio format. She plays uh, piano and uh, guitar, uh, guitar uh, but she'll have a bass and player and drummer. Uh, and um, uh, again, it's it's an evening with Patty Griffin. She comes out, you get a long show of Patty Griffin. And then the next night, uh, Saturday, August twelfth, is Matt Nathanson. Now Matt Nathanson is actually a Lexington boy. So uh, he grew up in Lexington, Mass. Couldn't wait to get out of there. <laughs> and, and actually, he, he couldn't afford it, probably. <laughs> and actually, uh, he he talks about his search for, you know, the good things in life and, you know, in, in living in L.A. and all this stuff and realizes how great it was back in Lexington, Massachusetts. So it's kind of a funny uh, uh, story. But he had a couple of big uh, hits um, back in uh, 2007. There was one called Car Crash. Uh, and uh, another, uh, I'm not going to sing them for you. Uh, another, uh, Come On, Get Higher. Uh, and um, uh, another one called Faster. So uh, 2008 and 2011. So uh, he... Um, has had had uh, six studio albums. Uh, he has um, uh, a lot of songs that have appeared in TV shows. So uh, my notes here say NCIS, Scrubs, 90210, <laughs> and The Vampire Diaries. So there's something to think about. And of course, he's been on all the... Um, uh, and actually, I, I think I said six studio albums. He's got 12 studio albums. Um, so anyway... Um, Matt Nathanson, uh, sort of, 
you'd put them in the pop singer category, somebody you'd hear on the river radio station, sure. uh, that sort of thing. Uh, by the way, that week, before we do the shows on the 12th and 13th, Wednesday, August 9th, Kaliba Afropop at our kids series. Uh, so um, representing multiple African nations mm -hmm. uh, and should be very upbeat uh, African music. And then Thursday, August 10th, Ben Rundick and Friends, uh, the hippest family music around, uh, w winner of uh, a bunch of, bunch of Parent Choice Awards. Uh, so that weekend, uh, I'm sorry, that week, Wednesday and Thursday, the kids shows will be both musically oriented yeah. Just so happens the following week, uh, Wednesday, August 16th, and Thursday, August 17th, are both magic-oriented, uh, one a little more comedy than the other. But uh, Stevie Kidding Magic on Wednesday, August 16th, the ridiculous magician is how they bill them. And uh, <laughs> you, you want that in your title. Yeah. Uh, Thursday, August 17th, Magic by George, uh, Illusions and Magic. And then we come into... Uh, the weekend, uh, the next weekend, uh, Friday, uh, August 18th, uh, okay. the return of oh, classic rock weekend, I'm calling it. Yes, right? it, it is. <laughs> uh, cl uh, classic Albums Live uh, is coming, and they're doing uh, all the hits of Creedence Clearwater Revival. And their whole thing is note for note, cut for cut. They, they take an album, which is, in this case, Creedence Clearwater's Greatest Hits yeah. album, uh, which is called Chronicles Number 1. I, I still don't know if there's a Chronicles Number 2, but that's in or there. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, uh, so everything, Proud Mary, Green River, you know, up around the bend. All, all, all the, the classics uh, we all know. People right. our age know all so, these songs. And you, and, and you know every lead guitar bit, every vocal <laughs> And it's got to be right. And, and that's play, what these guys are about. And they'll play it note for note in the order it appears on the uh, album. Uh, in, that, in this case, it's a Greatest Hits album. Uh, um, Classic Albums Live, this is their sixth time performing at the Lowell Summer Music Series, which ought to tell you something. First time they came and they were doing Abbey Road. So they did the whole Abbey Road album in order, perfect note for note, uh, and then went on and did a bunch of Beatles hits. So we had them back the next year, and they came with Strings and Horns and did Sgt. Pepper live, uh, and then followed up with a bunch bunch more hits. Um, since then, we've had uh, Pink Floyd, um, The Eagles, uh, Fleetwood Mac, um, I may be missing somebody, but uh, Queen, Queen was a, a big one. Uh, so in each time, there's a slightly different membership in the group for each uh, band, uh, but each time they hit the nail on the head. And uh, those who are fans, like if you're a Creedence Clearwater fan, you don't want to hear somebody do, you know, a poor version of it or a second rate version. You're going to get, you're going to get the best. Uh, the, these folks are dedicated to doing it. Right. right. So, and that is Friday, August eighteenth, and then the next night, Saturday, August nineteenth. Led Zeppelin two. Uh, Led Zeppelin two. So here's a case. This is a band from Chicago, so they're not around the area very much. Uh, but um, and there are a number of Ze Led Zeppelin um, cover bands that are touring the mm -hmm. region, and they're here every year. Uh, but this one um, uh, it hasn't been here that regularly. But uh, they are from, um, they they combined, you know, uh, got together from a bunch of uh, sort of metal bands and uh, uh, hard rock bands from uh, in Chicago. And um, um, so you'll, you'll hear all the, you know, Stairway to Heaven, Whole Lot of Love. You're going to hear them all. So uh, that's... Uh, Saturday, August nineteenth, and um, and again, you know, you know, what's nice about some of these th shows, like it's a twenty nine dollar ticket, so it's a nice, affordable night. If you're if if you have some good memories of Led Zeppelin, they actually look quite a bit like Led do they, Zeppelin. So. Do they really? <laughs> Wait, Led Zeppelin back in the day or Led Zeppelin today? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. You, you know, Led Zeppelin broke up so many years ago i'm trying to remember I, I should know the date the dates but i mean decades ago that there's like this image of them but they don't look like that anymore. <laughs> but led zeppelin too will right. look like them right. all right uh sunday august 27th that's a, a special performance well right it's actually not a lowell summer music show but it's a show that we wanted to help promote okay. so we've got them on our website we've got them in our brochure uh promoting the summer uh but it is the anchor dance troupe which is lowell based uh they are world class 
that performed at the White House and Jacob's yeah. Pillow uh, dance uh, in the Berkshires yeah. and whatnot. Uh, so um, they are doing um, uh, um, a special show. It's free. It's uh, 6 p.m. And um, so on a Sunday, so it's kind of early. Uh, and um, it, um, it you know, it'll be a very entertaining show. Well, it's kind of cool because they've appeared on so many stages, uh, right. you know, at the Auditorium, Merrimack Repertory Theater, every, right. every major stage around Lowell and then right. a few around the country, as, right. as you mentioned. But they've never done a show at Boarding House Park, right? Well, they've, or, or done have some, they? they've done some shows, but we haven't put them in our calendar. Uh -huh. To I mean, we're trying to help them and trying to promote them. And uh, because we know they're first class. So... Um, and uh, I think maybe, uh, you know, particularly if it's a beautiful night, people bring their lawn chairs and blankets and say, let's check this out, 6 p.m. on a Sunday. Awesome. It's going to yeah. be a fun night. It's, yep. uh, it's Tuesday, August 1st, 2023. That's the day Peter and I are recording this. When you're watching it, we don't know, but we're covering an entire month, really, of shows coming up with the Lowell Summer Music Series. Going to get to the final couple of acts of the season before we wrap it up over there at Boarding House Park. I want to quickly thank our sponsors for helping make this podcast, all of our podcasts, and all of Inside Lowell possible for that matter. We've got, uh, well, dozens of them, too many of them to read right now, but there's a couple that I do have to read for you, contractually bound to, uh, <laughs> and I'm more than happy to do it because these folks, of course, support local media to an unbelievable level and make it possible for us to bring you all the different services that we do here at Inside Lowell. Of course, our friends at Washington Savings Bank, serving the greater Lowell community for over 130 years. Lowell and Drake and residents, you still have time. They keep extending this offer for you. They love you that much. But make the switch now to Washington Savings Bank. Find out how you can get $300 simply by opening a qualified new account. Learn more at WashingtonSavings.com. Of course, our friends at Reverie 73 voted Lowell's number one cannabis shop by Boston.com. They actually had a display tent at the Lowell Folk Festival. Well, first time the Folk Festival featured a 21 plus section and our friends at Reverie 73 were there. It wasn't their beautiful location at 1148 Bridge Street in Lowell, but it, uh, it did do the trick. You can also shop their full product line online at Reverie73.com. Elevate your cannabis experience at Reverie 73. Hafner's heating and cooling homes and businesses for nearly a century. Fill up your vehicle, keep it clean at one of their many service stations and car washes throughout Lowell and the Merrimack Valley. Hafners, it kicks. The sign behind me tells you it does. They kick too. And last but certainly not least, our friends at Boston North Credit Card Company. They do it all for your business. Point of sale systems, credit card processing, ATM sales and service, phone and answering services. Learn more online at bostonnorthcompany.com. And with that... I bring back our friend Peter Osella from the Lowell Summer Music Series. All right, we're up to the last uh, week now of uh, of shows. And we're actually going right. to go from the end of August into September. Right. On Thursday the 31st, you've got the Robert Clay Band. Robert Cray Band. Cray. Uh, Robert Cray has been out there since the, the mid-70s. He's um, uh, just a, a great style of guitar. It's actually, he's called a blues guitarist but it's really as much soul music uh he's got a very soulful delivery to this and you'll hear a lot of i don't want to say motown but you'll hear a lot of soul kind of feeling to what he does uh he's got 20 albums out over the years uh and uh has won five grammy awards so has uh, he been here before? uh he has in the past yep uh, 2008 to be precise okay it's been a while so uh, we're glad to have Robert Cray back on Thursday, August 31st. Uh, and then on Friday, September 1st, um, uh, the jam band Mo. Mo. And Mo has been here, too, in 2017. Ah. And um, Mo, uh, well, if you're into jam bands, you know what you're going to get, um, uh, which, which is um, uh, some gr virtuoso guitar playing and keyboard playing and whatnot, uh, some jamming songs with a great beat to them, uh, that um, and a spectacular light show. So uh, that is, uh, Boarding House Park will be lit up 
like no other time. So if you ever want to see what can happen, this is it. So Mo is returning Friday, September 1st. Um, so it's the, sort of the beginning of the Labor Day weekend, sure. uh, Thursday and Friday, and then you can go off and do your own thing for the rest of the weekend. <laughs> and one more show at Boarding House Park. It's right. a it's an annual, Was it? I'm looking at my fly here, 42nd 40, annual yeah. banjo and fiddle contest. So the summer music series, this is our 33rd season. Uh -huh. So it tells you something if the banjo and fiddle contest is having their 42nd season, which means it, they predate us. They were they've played, had various locations before there was a boarding house park. Uh, and uh, so uh, what happens, this will be Saturday, September 9th, and uh, at 10 a.m., um, uh, there are f free workshops, so on various, you know, uh, old-time fiddle or bluegrass or... or uh, um, Celtic music or whatever uh, they have uh, and and these are spread around boarding house park so you see these little groups of six eight ten twelve people uh, kind of jamming together uh, in these workshops as they talk about the you know the elements of producing that kind of music that's at 10 a.m. at 11 a.m. Uh, those groups kind of sort of meld together into a couple of organized jam sessions so the groups get bigger and you know, one's on one side of the park, another on another side of the park, and they're just going to town. Uh, and so everybody gets to participate. Then that brings us to uh, that. Th those things are happening while people are registering for the contest. And the contest is actually noon to 5 or 6 p.m. whenever they run out of contestants. And they usually have 50 or more contestants. Mm -hmm. And um, there is no charge to compete in the contest, and there's no charge to attend the contest or, or any of this. So when they're playing together in the groups while the registration is happening and they're quote jamming, yeah. are they trying to intimidate the competition or are they just kind of having some, fun and letting loose, right? There may be some of that going on. I never really thought of it. <laughs> they're yeah. a ruthless banjo or fiddle player. I, I think if you're, if you're in the genre, you love playing with other people. And actually, <laughs> actually what happens is uh, uh, during the day, if you walk around uh, be along the canal, you'll see a couple of people playing over here. Further down mm. the canal, a couple of people playing over there. Uh, and I'm kind of told the banjo's making a little bit of a comeback in music yeah. from what I'm hearing from folks. Yeah, I think it I'm is. I'm not a big country music guy, yeah. but... Yeah, I, I, I kind of think it is. And uh, what's interesting is you get uh, performers of, of all ages, you know. Uh, we had... Uh, it was a big deal last year uh, we had the group Gaelic Storm come and play at the summer music series and they introduced their brand new fiddler now that this band's been out there for decades the brand new fiddler from Lowell Massachusetts who said I've been on this stage many times competing in the banjo and fiddle no contest. kidding and uh, that's yeah. a great story yeah it's a great story and and the uh, the banjo and fiddle organizers went went crazy over that one and they interviewed her and we had that a, needs to be on the fly we had an interview with her in last year's little uh, publication they put out for the event so um, uh, that is uh, so 10 a.m. as early as 10 a.m. to as late as 6 p.m. Come any time of the day, stay a little bit, stay a while, uh, and um, uh, you're with kindred spirits, yeah. and they appreciate uh, the support. Yeah. And again, free event. Yeah, and all of these shows available, because we we had a ton of them that we just yeah. went through, all of them, a full lineup available online, lowellsummermusic.org. You can watch videos of, generally of live performances, so yes. you'll know exactly what it's going right. to sound like out in the park uh rain location it uh i saw last night i was doing a little bit of research 15 of the 30 days in june it rained in boston i would imagine we were similar here and then just this morning don't don't, don't make me cry just this morning i woke up in front of the wettest july in ever recorded at mount washington yep. rain 22 of the 31 days so I have to say this, Peter. Welcome you have rain. World. You have rain locations for some of these right. shows, and you right. you might have to use them here right. pretty quickly. Uh, on some dates, we're able to go to Lowell Memorial Auditorium. On some dates, that's not available, and we're able to go to Lowell High School Auditorium, which is sixteen hundred seats. Mm -hmm. We're blessed to have indoor options at all, because as you know, there are plenty of festivals. Heck, Taylor Swift. And um, who was it? There was another a country singer just recently. Did somebody uh, just played while a tornado hit the <laughs> a couple of nights yeah, ago, right? Yeah. So, uh, and and um, 
Yeah, and and when it's that bad, you don't want to be standing yeah, out there in a pouring not. rain and uh, or or getting a curtailed show. So uh, to have the option to move indoors is tremendous, yeah. uh, and we do it as on as limited basis as we can. We're an outdoor series. There are times we sure. say if there's a little passing shower, you know, it's suck outdoors. It up. Yeah, yeah, suck it up. But yeah. of course, people always go to the website. If if if, right. if you're looking at the forecast and right. weather is at all in question, right, right. go to the website and you'll find right. out if it's going to be yeah. indoors in, or outdoors. In fact, if you're on your phone and you go to lowellsummermusic.org, the first th the first thing that's going to pop up is a message about uh, uh, if if the show has to move indoors. So that would be something you'd look for if it were. Um, D doubtful all right and one final note as, as we always remind people don't get caught up by some of these fake oh. ticketing sites that will tack on a premium for their own pockets either go to the lowell auditorium and pick yep. them up in person you even get to save yes. on the online handling yes. charge yes or go to lowellsummermusic.org you right. will pay the price that the tickets actually cost right. not yeah. some crazy yeah. market. thank you for saying that because we've heard from people who paid exorbitant amounts of money and um, it, it's just wrong. But uh, the even when you realize you've been scammed, you go back and try to figure out how did this happen? And and you look at the way stuff is presented online. You almost think you're on sure. a, a venue website. And this, this is not just our venue. It's all the venues. Uh, it, it happens with restaurants. They'll put up menus from 10 years ago. I've, I've run into that pricing dilemma at wow. my family's place. So, wow. uh, but you, you know, you, you don't want to pay you like some of these shows you're talking 29, $39. Yeah. You don't yeah. end up paying 60, $70. Yeah, there's no reason for, for it. Yeah. So lowellsummermusic.org yeah. is the website. It's yep. your one-stop shop for yep. everything you need to know. So, I get, so, all right, so we still have, I don't want to say this will wrap up the season, but this will wrap up our interviews, but <laughs> still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine official music shows, plus the Angor Dance Troupe, plus the Banjo and Fiddle Contest, busy August oh, and what? early September. And you're missing at Boarding House Park. five children's shows. Oh, I shows. forgot the five kids' shows as well. I can't yeah. get my kids to one of these, yeah. by the way, yeah. this year. Yeah, so it's, it's a busy, busy time for us and our crew works very hard sometimes in unforgiving weather uh whether it's you know raining you get to go indoors sure they get to bring everything Correct. indoors and then bring it back to our storage and, and while you're sitting out there enjoying some cool music on the nighttime when you drop 20 degrees in temperatures yeah. your crew's out there setting up in 95 degree oppressive heat oh, yeah. and humidity yeah what happens what happens Kudos. midday is a yeah. whole different animal Kudos to you and yeah. everybody who puts this together yeah. and, the, and the Lowell Festival Foundation yeah. as well for not just what they did with the folk festival but they are also the, yeah. the folks who kind to shepherd this each and every year we really appreciate appreciate it peter i'm mm. looking forward to melissa etheridge yeah so, there's some people out there in the other room those youngsters are laughing at me because of you know i'm all hip to go to the melissa etheridge show but she's huge she is she is <laughs> and, you hear that danielle and Lindsay? and and i gotta tell you i'm always proud of what we put on the stage the quality of every performer is, they are professionals. They're right up there. Uh, and uh, certainly when you're out in the park, there is no no better sound quality at a concert than what you get at Boarding House Park. Yep. So Does not get any better. Right. Peter Rossella, thank you. And thank, thank all you. of you for watching us as well inside Lowell. If Lowell is your home, this is your place. Till next time, everybody stay safe out there.